So we've just been looking at power and how it's defined as energy transferred over time. And that's also the work done over time. And we just did an example right here looking at the power needed for an elevator and we found out uh, how to do that. I'd like to show you something kind of funny. So this is uh, an example here that I've done with my students where I've just asked them, it's kind of fun to, to not really know all the parameters of the question, but sometimes just to invent your own question. That's what I love about physics, is that you can pretty much invent any question and then use the physics tools to solve it. So in this case, my question to them was, would you make a good horse? What I meant to say here, I meant uh, something to do with horsepower. So I did give them a hint and I said, well, I mean, because you could just say yes or no. But I mean, we can, of course, test it. So this is, uh, it's not really a horse. I think this is supposed to be a stylized uh, cartoon drawn unicorn. But the idea between, uh, behind horsepower this is the thing we're going to be looking at here, actually, is horse power. So that's a weird unit. And they actually started using it in order to compare. You know when they had first, like they had a steam engine or even a car, you might want to know, you know, how powerful is it compared to a horse? And it turns out you can figure that out. Because if you had, let's say, uh, this horse here was tied, let's say, to some sort of uh, bridle here, and then let's say you had some sort of rope going from it. And then let's say this rope was connected, instead of it being in the sky, maybe it was on the ground here. And then maybe uh, there was a well here dug in. Let's say there was some sort of well. In the well, there's some sort of bucket, you know, attached by a string or something like that. So then you could have some sort of, if you had like a little wheel right here like this, then you could actually consider, okay, well, you know, this is actually a way to do this for horsepower. You could measure, you know, how long does it take the horse to raise this bucket of a certain mass, a certain height? You know, how long does it take it? And that, if you did that enough with enough horses, you could find out what the average horsepower is. And it turns out, this is the key thing you need to know, that one horsepower is approximately 746 watts. This is the sort of conversion thing that you would need to know. So, I mean, with my class, we talked about this, and I just asked them these open-ended questions, and they started asking me, what do you mean by a good horse? I said, well, what do you think we could use? And the students were like, I don't know, I've heard of horsepower. I said, aha, let's look at that. What's a horsepower? So then someone looked it up on Google and found that it was 746 watts. Great. Then we thought, okay, then how can we test if we're as good as a horse? Well, then we had to design an experiment to do it. So um, one thing that some students chose to do was something like this. They said, well, all we have at school, we just have some stairs. So what if you had a whole bunch of stairs? You know, so this here is a situation here. So we have stairs. And in order to know the, the power, well, power is, you know, um, an energy over time or a work done over time. So what we need to do is we need to time ourselves doing something where we could calculate the energy needed or the work done. So in this case, if you ran up the stairs, so if you ran up the stairs, then what you would do is you would know your height right here. Right? You'd know this H here. And if you know that height, then what you could do is you could figure out then that your power was then equal to, well, the work done, which it's the same situation that we just looked at over here. Same situation with MGH over time, because that's the energy needed is potential energy. Or you could see it as the work done, which is the force times the displacement. Same, same thing here. So in this case, it would still be MGH over time. So that means all they had to do is, well, put in their own mass, times 9.81 times whatever height, the vertical height that they gained, you know, in doing the stairs here, and then divide that by the time it took them in seconds. And from there, they could calculate their power in watts. So this is kind of a fun thing. You can actually do this at home if you want. All you need to know is the vertical height that you run up, and you can figure out your horsepower. And you could figure out, because obviously this tells you how many watts you have, and then just figure out, well, one horsepower is 746. So if you're doing this and you only generated, I don't know, 600 watts, then you wouldn't make a very good horse because obviously you're generating less than one horsepower. But, uh, I mean, and just keep in mind, I've seen some students have more than one uh, horsepower, some students are less than. It depends on a lot of factors. Number one, how fast can you run upstairs and how massive you are. Consider this, if you want the power to be as great as possible, given a certain height. You either want to make your own mass bigger. Well, you can't really make it bigger. So if it's someone who is very, very massive, 
then you know they'll have a, a large power. However, if they're very, very massive, maybe it takes them a long time to run up because maybe, I don't know, maybe they're not in very good shape. So in that case, then that maybe evens out. But the best sort of situation for power would be someone who's very massive, but is also very, very fast. Because if you're fast, this time is small. And dividing by a small number makes this even larger. So if you're really massive and you're really, really fast, then you'd have the maximum sort of power. So it all depends on what your mass is and how fast you can run upstairs. That's a way to generate it. Now, does that mean that you'd really be a good horse? No, not at all, because, of course, horses work a lot differently than humans, and it seems a little bit of a silly unit to compare a car, but they still use this unit. When you go buy a car, still today, they say, how many horsepower is that car? So it's really weird that we still use something really old, like a horsepower, when not very often are we using horses to do you know, manual labor anymore, unless you live on a farm and then you have horses, of course, but, um, I mean, that's less and less. So I think it's kind of weird that we still use this unit of horsepower in order to define how much power something can have. And still today, you can look at you know some really fancy car, some really big engine, and they'll still say this is how many horsepower it is. All you have to do is design some experiment where the car can do work and divide it by the time it takes. There's a lot of different ways of doing it, but at least that's just one example. I think it's kind of a fun way to take a look at uh, horsepower. Now we can also take a look at efficiency. Now efficiency is actually something pretty straightforward. It's actually not that hard to deal with. Uh, let's say this, not all, so this is the thing here now, not all energy um, that's put into a system, um, let's see here, is, is used or can be used, I guess I could say. That's because, you know, this is a case a lot of times for like a power generator or some sort of machine or something. So we can say this, there's lots of losses of energy. So there's lots of different sources of things losing energy. It could lose it due to friction, due to heat, all sorts of examples. Okay, but I mean, there's just, there's lots of losses. So the important thing then is to consider this, and this is sort of an equation we can use. We can say that the efficiency is going to be the useful energy that you get out of it, divided by, in this case here, the total energy you put in. Now it has no units. And the reason it has no units is that this is energy divided by energy, so that doesn't really do much. But it's also the same, you could say it's this, you could say it's the useful power out over the total power in, I guess you could say. And that's just because, um, well, the energy is also related to the power, which we just learned about, right? Power is just energy over time. So we could consider that this right here could be the equation for efficiency here. We could say that that is how we define efficiency. We just need to know how much, how much stuff do we get out compared to how much we put in. And nothing's perfect. There's always losses. So here's an example. So a motor requires 2.0 mj. Now, I don't mean Michael Jackson. What I mean here is mega joules. This is a key thing here. You have to take a look at this. Uh, but this motor also loses 500 kilojoules of energy due to friction and heat and whatever else. What's the motor's efficiency? Well, this is really easy then. There's nothing to it. Okay, the efficiency, some people call this with a little e, although it's not so common, is just, well, again, it's the useful energy out divided by the total energy in. So what's the useful energy out? In other words, you know, how much are we getting out of it? In other words, you know, what, what are we actually... Um, doing here. Well, if we take a look at this then, we've got the useful stuff out is going to be, well, we don't know this exactly, but we can figure this out. See this right here, this is 2 megajoules. So that means this is 2 times 10 to the 6 joules. That's what this means. So what we can do then, so we can say, well, 2 times 10 to the 6 joules, that's the same thing as, uh, well, 2 million. So that means 6 zeros here. Two, six million joules. But it loses this much. 
So that means, I mean, we're not getting that much out. How much are we getting out? Well, it's going to be, uh, let's see, this one here, this loss here, that loss is going to be 500, well, kilo means times 10 to the 3, which is the same thing as 500,000. So we could say that what you're actually getting out of it, let's think, now you're putting in this much energy, that's how much you're putting into it. So by the way, that's going to be this bottom number here. That's sort of, that's how much energy you sort of throw into this machine here. So 2 million joules you throw into the machine. But how much do you actually get out? Well, you get out what you put in minus what you lose. So in this case, it would be 2 million minus 500,000. So in this case right here, well, let's see, that would be, um, well, if you look at this, 2 million minus 500,000 is uh, 1.5 million. All that divided by 2 million. Well, I can cancel out a lot of these zeros, can't I? So I can take out actually all three of these zeros, and I can take out these two zeros, that'll be the same. So 15 over 20. I mean, I can try to do this without a calculator, which I totally can. I can divide, uh, so that's going to be 15 over 20, which, by the way, let's see, I can divide both of these by 5. So then I get, um, what do I get? I get 3 over 4. And that means this is, well, 0 0.75. So I can say this thing is 75% efficient, you could say. Just because 0.75, if I want to write it as a something over 100, that would be 75% efficient. This is actually extremely high. Most machines are not at all this efficient. So keep in mind this. There's a few key things here. Efficiency, uh, well, nothing can be 100% efficient. So that means you're always going to get an efficiency that's less than this. And that's because there's always some losses. So no matter what you put into it, you're always using less. Uh, not using, sorry, but what you're getting useful. So your useful stuff you get out is always less than what you put in. So you always have a smaller number divided by a bigger number. So you always get efficiency of, well, I suppose technically if it was perfect, you'd have 100%. Because you'd have, let's say, 2 million over 2 million. That would be 1. And that's the same thing as 100%. But just to show you that efficiency, at least, you can't have something that's more than 100% efficient. And in fact, in real life situations, nothing is even 100% efficient. It's always quite a bit less. So a lot of engines, I mean, this is actually extremely high. There's not many examples at all where something is even this efficient. But just to show you a little bit about efficiency, and it turns out that that's still related to power.